Today we are reading chapters 18 and 19 in Romeo and Julio. Chapter 18, Romeo's Journal. I met Julio at lunch yesterday again. He wasn't standing on the table this time, but he was there before I was. He grinned and looked really glad to see me, and suddenly I felt shy. I wondered if my hair was smooth, or my breath was smelly, or my shirt was wrinkled. But as soon as we started talking, I forgot all that. His voice has a soft lilt to it that makes me feel comfortable and safe. He told me all about his home in Texas and his grandfather's ranch and his friends there. I found myself wondering if he had a girl back in Texas. Surely someone as good looking as Julio would have a girlfriend, but he never mentioned it and I didn't have the nerve to ask. I wonder why I even care. He's just a guy at school, but he's so much more than that. I look forward to seeing him, talking to him, being with him. I think about him when we're not together and wonder what he's doing. This is not like me and I don't even mind. All through my morning classes, I found myself thinking about that stupid surprise he talked about. When I got to lunch, I found on the table a small stuffed lion. It was furry and soft and the color of caramel pudding. I looked at him hesitantly and smiled. For you, he said simply, keep it close to you and think of me when you touch it. He looked suddenly embarrassed and pretended to be fixing the bright orange bow around the neck of the little lion. I'd never been given a gift that was so thoughtful and wonderful. I felt all shy and embarrassed again, like my thoughts were naked or something. I love it, I said quietly, hugging the little lion close to me. I'm going to call in pudding. He said, keep him in your book bag, and when you reach in to get a notebook or lunch money or a peppermint, I'll be there with you. How did he manage to make a stupid piece of golden fuzz seem like a million carat diamond? I wanted to give him something then, something to show I was interested, but not too personal. I dug down in my book bag and came up with my little gold keychain. It had my initials, RRC, engraved on it. I got it for my birthday last year. I wanted him to have it. I told him as I gave it to him, hang on to this until I get some car keys, okay? He rubbed it shiny with the tail of his t-shirt, looked it, hooked it into a loop of his jeans, and said he'd be glad to be the keeper of my keys. Somehow he made that sound sexy. We sat there grinning at each other, ignoring the rest of the cafeteria, the rest of the school, the rest of the world. Then the trouble started. Halfway through lunch, Rashad and Terrell, two dudes who hang with the gangbangers, stopped by our table. I remember both of them from kindergarten. They used to be silly and sweet, but they scare me now. It's like they're angry all the time. They walk around the halls with matching purple jackets and frowns. They never do homework, but even the teachers seem a little scared and don't bother them about it. I'm not sure if they're in the gang because nobody comes out and says so, especially to somebody like me, but they all hang together on the corner by the bus stop after school. They take kids' bus money and sometimes even push kids around or knock them down. Anyway, they stopped at our table and just stared at us. They didn't say anything. They just looked. Julio glanced at them, started to say something, but changed his mind and decided to ignore them. They left after a few minutes, but they looked real hard at me, as if to give me some unspoken message. They left a chill behind them. The silly, friendly mood of our lunch conversation had been ruined. We finished quickly and promised to write tonight on email. Neither one of us said much. It's hard to know what to be afraid of when you don't even know what the threat is. Chapter 19, Julio and Ben. The final bell rang. All the band equipment was put away, and Julio and Ben headed out to catch their bus. Julio stopped by his locker to get his history book, and Ben, hair buttercup yellow today, put his history book away. Don't you ever do homework, Ben? Julio asked as he tossed his book into his bag. Not if I can help it, man. Homework goes against everything I believe in, like freedom and independence. How am I going to start a revolution like Sam Adams and his boys did back in 1776 if I don't practice now? But you get good grades anyway, Julio noted in admiration. Ah, my friend who needs his nose pierced. I read all the time, much more than the teacher assigns. I go to the library and I get so involved with the stories and the lives of the people in the history book that I end up knowing enough to teach the class. But I'd never tell the teacher. He thinks I'm Ben the weirdo. That's cool with me. You've got enough body piercing for both of us. Is that a new one on your eyebrow? Yeah, I was bored and it drives my mother crazy. You know, I'll probably end up being the corporate lawyer she wants me to be, but I'm going to have fun on the journey. Like the safety pins in your ears? Why buy jewelry? I believe in self-expression. For real, I bet little old ladies on the bus get up and move when they see you coming. Yeah, I love it. Here I come, leather jacket, dog collar on my neck, blue or pink or green hair, and all my visible body parts pierced. I sit down next to one of them and look real slowly over at the, her, and then I grin, showing lots of teeth. Why do you do that, man? Julio asked, laughing. Why not? Life's a trip. Enjoy the ride. So speaking of tripping, how was dining with Miss Dynamite today, mi amigo? Julio grinned at the thought of Romeo, then frowned as he remembered the rest. Lunch today with Romeo was great, at least at first. We laughed and rattled on together like we've known each other for years. We talked about her mom's shop and her dad's TV show. That and Annette Norris is a real trip. Yeah, I saw it last night. She kept stumbling on over words like maintenance and metropolitan. It would have been funny if it wasn't so embarrassing. Old Lynette is my kind of girl, pretty and stupid. 
Julio added, it looks like Romy's dad tries real hard to keep a straight face, but in those little sections just before the commercials when they have to make small talk on the air, you can see he's straining to act like he likes her. It must be rough. Ben and Julio walked down to the corner, past the little store where kids bought chips and soda and illegal cigarettes. The weather was cold, but the sun was shining, letting them know spring would show up sooner or later. They had missed the early bus, so they knew they had at least a 20-minute wait. They stood in silence for a few minutes, Ben's corn-bright hair blowing in the chilly breeze. Ben said finally, so tell me, did you give Romy the lion? Julio laughed. Yeah, I was scared at first, but I think she liked my little surprise. And even though it was just a small stuffed lion, she treated it like it was a gift from a king. Ben bowed down in mock reverence and announced, all hail King Julio. Julio punched his arm, chuckling. Cut that out, Ben. Oh, sire, tell me, did the princess Romeo honor you with a gift as well, or have you changed your initials to RRC and decided to advertise it on the loop of your jeans? He wouldn't stop bowing. Other students at the bus stop smiled, but they were used to Ben's antics. Yeah, she gave me the keychain, he admitted. Oh, how sweet. He was still bowing, only now he looked more like a penguin than the subject of a king. I wasn't sure if I should take it at first, Julio began. Why? Ben finally stood straight up. You think too much, man. But it seemed like she really wanted me to have it, so I thanked her and hooked it onto my own keychain, this one with the Texas Rangers logo on it. Good man, wise choice. So a perfect day? Not exactly. The family is still in the house. This ain't good, Julio. You telling me. Me and Romy were just finishing the last of the cafeteria chocolate milk, which is probably the only thing they can't mess up. And these two dudes came up to our table and stopped. I looked up to say something, thinking they were friends of Romiette's, but they didn't smile, and they had on purple. What did you do? There was nothing to do. They just stared at me. I don't think they liked me talking to her. They didn't say anything. They just looked at me, looked at her, and walked away. What are you going to do? Wait and see, and watch my back for now. What does Romy think? I don't know. I thought I had escaped that stuff. She looked as scared as I was. I think she knew them, but they weren't friends of hers. Why should anybody care who I have lunch with? Romeo is the only girl in the whole school who's been friendly to me, and now we're threatened because of it? What did she say? We didn't talk about it after they left. We both left the cafeteria in a hurry. We promised to write each other on email, but I wonder what she thinks about all this. I wonder if this will spoil anything that hasn't even had a chance to start yet. And I wonder if she's as scared as I am. Don't let the purple panthers sweat you, man. Maybe they're just showing off. I don't think so. They'll be back. I'm sure of it. Just chill and ignore them. You come into jazz band tryouts next week? You're pretty good on the saxophone. And you're not bad on the drums, Julio returned. Percussion is my life, howled Ben as he pounded on his book bag like a drum. I just love to make noise. Do you play other instruments, Julio asked. The bus, finally, could be seen in the distance, lumbering slowly toward them. Ben shrugged. Clarinet, vibes, bongos, and I'm a drummer in a rock band on weekends. What can I say? I'm a musician extraordinaire, senior Julio. You play anything else besides that sax? I can play the mandolin, Julio admitted sheepishly. Not much use for that in a marching band. For real? You got one? Yeah, I brought it with me from Texas. That's fat. How good are you? Whenever you have an opening in your rock band for an extra mandolin player, I'm your man, Ben. Actually, I'm pretty good. I played a little on weekends with a small Tejano, Tejano band in Corpus Christi. I miss all that stuff. It must be rough moving so far from home. I've lived here all my life. Maybe that's why I try to liven things up around here. Everything's the same, especially in the winter. Kinda gray. You got it. So I wear yellow hair and safety pins, and nobody knows all I want to do is make music. You're okay, Ben. I'll bring my mandolin one day and show you how to play it. Don't worry about me. That's the kind of thing that melts a girl's socks off. Somebody like Romiette would think it was so romantic. You make good sense, even if you do have a ring in your nose. It only hurts when I sneeze, or when somebody knocks it off your face. Don't remind me. Here's my bus. Catch you tomorrow. Later, man. Here's my bus pulling up in the rear.